good evening everyone so today we are going to see about the basic six sigma matrix and their estimation so basically the matrix are being used to make certain key decisions whenever you are going to make some improvements in a given project so let's see what are these matrix like what are the types and how to estimate these matrix so i'll be taking total uh, six matrix six or seven matrix the first one is the dpu second one is dpo and second third one is dpmo fourth one is ppm fifth one is fpy sixth one is rty and the final one is sigma level and out of these seven matrix most commonly used matrix are going to be this dpmo and the sigma level and remaining things can also be used but out of all these things dpmo as well as the six sigma level is most commonly used so this dpu refers to defects per unit and dpo refers to defects per opportunity and dpmo refers to defects per million opportunities and ppm refers to parts per million and fpy refers to first pass yield and rty refers to roll throughput yield and sigma level itself it's a sigma level and there's no elaboration for that and whenever you want to check the defects in the units that are being getting manufactured so you can use the initial three things like whenever you are going to refer to defects so you can use these things and whenever you are going to refer this defectives so in such a case you can use this ppm and the question is what is the main difference between defects and defectives so defects means not meeting a specific requirement of a customer specification whereas defective means failing of an entire product or service to meet a required criteria like for example let's take you are going to uh, let's take the case of a pharmaceutical manufacturing and you are manufacturing a subject batch and during the course of manufacturing you found that there is a deviation or incident which is reported in the batch so you can consider that as a defect though there is a reported defect in the batch it doesn't mean that the batch is going to fail until or unless the quality is tested and coming to this defective so this is something like a failure of a quality attribute so if any one of a quality attribute is being failed to meet the desired specification so automatically we can say the complete batch has failed such is the case of defective and now let's take one by one to calculate first one is dpu that is defective sorry defects per unit so let's take a case where you have manufactured total 500 number of batches so i am taking the example of pharmaceutical industry to make you understand better so let's say this is total 500 number of batches and defects found so let's say this is around 15 so the dpu is going to be total number of defects found divided by the total number of batches manufactured so the dpu is going to be 0.03 and the next one is dpo so dpo refers to defects per opportunity so coming to this opportunity so what is exactly this opportunity means so for each and every unit there will be multiple quality testings that we are going to do that means there are multiple opportunities for the particular unit to get failed like in the case of a pharmaceutical product after each and every stage of manufacturing we are going to perform complete analysis for the particular product and in this complete analysis you are going to test the product for different methods like uh, different testings will be there like the description identification related substances by hplc gc xrd so out of all these things so you can count the number of testings as number of opportunities for the product to fail why because even though if the product is going to fail a single 
test so you can consider the batch has completely failed so total number of tests refers to the total number of opportunities and the unit refers to the number of batches and coming to the case of dbmo so dbmo refers to the number of opportunities to fail like the number of defects per million opportunities in other words we can say if you are going to take total 1 million opportunities so how many defects can be found so it is nothing but the defects per million opportunities for better ex uh, clarity i'll take an example so i'll take the same case where the number of batches are 500 that is number of batches can be considered as units also and the defects identified are 15 and i'll consider for single unit there are five testings that means five number of opportunities so now the dpmo this is going to be total number of defects multiplied by 10 power 6 this is nothing but the million divided by number of units multiplied with number of opportunities so that means the dpmo is 6000 like for every 1 million opportunities so the dpmo is 6000 total number of defects are going to be around 6000 okay and the next one is the ppm so till now we are discussing only about the defects and coming to this ppm ppm will always refers to the defectives it doesn't deal with the defects so ppm refers to the number of defectives observed in 1 million parts defectives into 10 power 6 divided by number of units so for an example let's take the number of defectives are fifteen and total units are 500 so the ppm this is going to be total number of defective units multiplied by 10 power 6 divided by the total units so this is going to be almost 30000 and the next one is the first pass yield so this first pass yield refers to the total number of defect free units so it doesn't deal with the defects but it deals with the defect free units and the total number of defect free units divided by total units that are being manufactured is nothing but the first pass yield so in case of a pharmaceutical like uh, by taking the example of a pharmaceutical industry we can say total number of batches executed we can say this is 500 and in this defect free units or defect free batches we can say so this is going to be almost I'll consider 450 so the first pass yield FPY this is going to be the ratio that is defect free batches divided by total number of batches executed so that is the FPY is going to be 0.9 and the next one is the RTY so whenever you got only single stage to handle in such a case you can rely on this FPY but if you got multiple stages then better to calculate the RTY that is the roll throughput yield so this is going to be the combination of multiple stages like for an example let's say the first pass yield of stage number 1 this is found to be 0 0.9 and the first pass yield of stage number 2 this is 0 0.95 and first pass yield of stage number 3 so let's say this is 0 0.8 so automatically the roll throughput yield is going to be the product of all these three first pass yields so this is going to be 0 0.9 multiplied with 0 0.95 multiplied with 0 0.8 so the roll throughput yield is going to be around 0.684 in other words we can say this is a probability that a process with more number like uh, more than one step 
will produce the defect free units so here the probability is almost 68.4 percent okay and the final one is the sigma level so this is going to be the critical thing and also the most commonly used metric in six sigma so to better understand the sigma level we need to know the dpmo initially and then we can estimate the corresponding sigma levels so for example let's take the defects as 20 and the opportunities are 200 so you can calculate the sigma level as so here i'll be mentioning the formula only so sigma level equals to so i'll be taking the excel functionality is here norm sine v of 1 minus defect per opportunity plus 1.5 so this 1.5 refers to the sigma shift so here in this case of 20 defects and 200 opportunities this is going to be 1 minus defects is 20 divided by number of opportunities that is 200 plus 1.5 this is the sigma shift so you got the sigma level is 2.78 okay so this is how you can calculate the sigma level and we got a table for the sigma level versus the dpmo so let's try to understand how to calculate the sigma level from this dpmo here i'll be mentioning the sigma level here i'll mention about the dpmo and here i can mention the dpo and here the yield percent okay or else can mention the sigma level here so I'll just mention about this DPMOs the first one is 3.4 DPMO and the next one is 230 the next one is 6210 the next one is 66,800 the next one is 3,8,000 and then 6,90,000 so let's say these are the DPMOs and correspondingly let's calculate the DPO the sigma level and the yield percent so first of all to measure this DPO so what you can do is simply divide this DPMO by 10 power 4 sorry 10 power 6 So this is the DPO and I'll be applying the same formula to all. Okay. So now I have estimated the DPO and now coming to the sigma level. So this is going to be norm sin v of 1 minus this DPO plus 1.5. This is the sigma shift. So the sigma level is 6. So I will be applying the same formula to all these things. So now you can say. So if the process is of 1 sigma. That means. There will be a DPMO of 6,90,000. And if the process is having a 2 sigma level. So it will be having around 3,8,000 of defects. Sorry DPMO. And if it is a 3 sigma. It is going to be around 66,800 DPMO. And if it is a 4 sigma. So the DPMO is 6,210. If it's a 5 sigma, the DPMO is 230. And if it's a 6 sigma, the DPMO is 3.4. And correspondingly coming to this yield percentage. So this is going to be something like, we are going to subtract the number of DPMO from the 1 million opportunities. 
so this is going to be 1 million minus the DPMO divided by again 1 million so the yield percentage is 99.997% so I will be dragging it up to the bottom so so if it's a 6 sigma the yield percentage is 99.997 if it's a 5 sigma the yield percentage is 99.977 if it's a 4 sigma the yield percentage is 99.379 if it's a 3 sigma it's 93.32 if it's a 2 sigma it's 69.2 and if it's 1 sigma it's 31 percent so this is how we can correlate between the dpmo dpo sigma level and yield percent hope you have understood this video about estimation of different kind of metrics in six sigma and if you have any questions on this so you can directly write us at pharmacalc823 at the rate gmail.com and if you like our video please subscribe to our channel and also you can share the video with your dear ones and in the coming future i'll be making more videos on this six sigma topic also if you want to download this particular activity sheet so i'll be providing you with the downloading in the description so you can download it from there thanks for watching the video